In this video, I wanted to cover some of the default settings that we recommend for beginning EasyStone users. So let's go ahead and open up our EasyStone macro and let's go ahead and enter in some of these values. Now, initially for our library, we're going to choose our standard library because that's the only library that's available to us right now. And then we can choose any one of the various um, stone sizes within this library. So we're going to choose our SS10 stone size for our default uh, starting point. And then we're going to choose a color. Let's go ahead and choose crystal. And then for the size drop down, you can see there's nothing there. As the same is true with our spacing drop down, there's nothing there. And I want to add some default values to that. So we're going to click on our set stone sizes and spacing. Now, what I'm going to show you here may or may not pertain to you. So use the sizes that you're accustomed to using. So what we're going to do here in our size field, we're going to specify the various size stones that we typically use. And I do a lot of design work for various different clients who I make templates for and they actually make their own transfers. And depending on the type of rhinestone that you're using will de de depend on the size of the hole that you need to cut in the template. So for me, I do a lot of SS6 size stones at 2.4 but also at 2.6. It's usually one of the two sizes and every once in a great while I'll throw in a 2.8. Depends on whether if I'm using machine cut stones or Korean stones, Chinese stones, all these different variables will depend on the size hole that we're going to cut into our template. Then I would move on to my SS10 size stones. So I might use 3.2, 3.4, I do some 3.5s, Whatever sizes that you're accustomed to using for your SS10 stones, that's the value you're going to want to add. And then I use 4.2s, 4.4s, and so on and so forth, depending on the various size rhinestones that we're working with. Spacing, much the same way. This is the spacing from edge of stone to edge of stone, not from center of stone to center of stone, but from edge to edge. So we do 0.4, I do some 0.5s, I like some 0.6s, 0.8s, I do 1s twos, fours, and sixes, and so on and so forth. These are just some of the various defaults that, I've, that I know I've used from time to time, so it's nice to have as those defaults. So I go ahead and choose Save. So now in my drop-down list, you can see I have all the various size rhinestones that I just added and all the various different spacings that I like to work with from time to time in my drop-down. So let's go ahead and choose 3.2 for my default 10 SS size stone and we'll do 0.5 which is the spacing that I typically use from edge of stone to edge of stone when I'm dealing with SS 10 stones. Now the next thing we want to do is take a look at the editing tab. There's one value in here that you won't have a clue what it means but just enter these default values for me if you will. Here at break at nodes if you would enter a value of 30 and a value of 120. Okay, later we'll explain what those values do and how they affect um, different things here inside the Easy Stone macro. But that's all you need to do at break at, uh, break at nodes under the editing tab. Then let's switch over to the miscellaneous tab and over here on weed margin, let's just type in 25. When we're entering values here in Easy Stone, it's assuming we're entering a value in millimeters. If we choose the inch option, then we could enter values in inches. But most typically, because we're working with rhinestones and they're always defined as a millimeter value, we just enter values in millimeters. So what is 25 millimeters? Well, for those of you who don't know, 25.4 millimeters is in an inch. So when we say a, we want a weed margin of 25, what we're really saying is we want a weed margin of approximately one inch. Okay, and that's really all the, the default settings that we really need to worry about for the initial startup of Easy Stone. There are a few extras, but we'll get into those when we actually start using some of the various functions and some of the different options that we have available to us. So now that we have all of our default settings already set up in Easy Stone, now we can begin to actually create a project using Easy Stone in conjunction with CorelDRAW.